everybody and welcome to this chat about the England versus Belgium game the final game of Group G um, for both these teams and well I learned nothing <laughs> from that game I don't know about you guys but um, that felt like a friendly um, England made, I think, eight changes. Um, let's have a look at the team. Um, so from their previous games, they had um, Loftus-Cheek, who played previously, obviously, for the injured alley, uh, Pickford, and uh, they had Stones in. He was replaced by Maguire at half-time. Everybody else was new. Belgium um, was just Courtois, I believe. I think everybody else... Uh, sorry, Boyata as well. Um, everybody else was changed. So, yeah, very odd. Very, very odd game. I, I don't remember seeing a game like that in the World Cup. Um, certainly we didn't see this in any other group. Teams rested players, but you didn't have, a, I don't think, a game where both teams knew they were through already. Probably in all honesty, didn't care too much about whether they won or came second in the group, and as a result, changed most of the entire team. And England lost 1-0, so not a good result. Um, the bad sides of it were really a lack of creativity, I think. Um, if you look at that midfield, there's not a lot of creativeness in there anyway, to be fair. Dyer is a shield for the defence. Delph, I think, is a very, very tidy player. I like him a lot, but um, I don't think he is uh, like a playmaker type of midfielder. I think he's more of a kind of a... Uh, just a tidy, like, box-to-box -box kind of midfielder, very versatile. I think he's definitely um, a good guy to have in the squad, but he's clearly not one of our best midfielders. And... Loftus Cheek, I thought had a bad game personally. I, I thought he had too many times where either his crosses or his balls into the box or just those types of things were not were not really quite as good as they should have been from him. I think he's better than that game showed. Um, so certainly plenty to. I mean, listen, this this is England B versus Belgium B, right? This is not a competitive World Cup game. <laughs> you know, this is the least competitive World Cup game there probably has been, barring Denmark versus France, which was a travesty. At least these two teams attacked each other. You could tell that a lot of these players were playing to try and get into the squad um, on both sides. And I, I wouldn't say it wasn't an entertaining game in some ways. It certainly died off towards the end. I'd say the first half was much better. Belgium deserved to win. Um, in my opinion, had way more chances um, to do it. Their goal was very good, cut inside by Janazai, who just lifted one in. Looked like that kind of classic Janazai we've seen in the early days of Man United before he just kind of fell off a cliff, basically. Um, you know, he was capable of doing things like that. And, you know, good goal. Um, yeah, England did not look very convincing at all. Um, at the back, I thought Stones played well, and I thought Maguire played well. Jones and Cahill, I thought, I think Cahill did okay because Cahill's just a solid defender. He's not really going to offer you much more than that, and he had a goal line clearance, um, and I thought he did okay. Jones did not impress me at all. Dyer did not impress me at all. I thought his passing was a bit, a bit wayward, and I thought he was just, just very way too deep um, even though that's what his role kind of was I guess um, Pickford, this was the first game he was really tested and he didn't do brilliantly to be completely honest um, I don't think there was a huge amount he could do for Janazai's goal um, but there were some other times when he would palm, palm the ball out from some kind of fairly vicious shots but you know, very dangerously palming it out kind of in front of him when it should really either be kind of going over the bar or, you know, behind him sort of thing. So I didn't think he had a great game either. Um, 
yeah, the midfield we kind of talked about, not that great. The wing backs, I thought Danny Rose had a really good game. I was actually really impressed with him. I've kind of said that I think he should be in, in front of Young, um, and I think he might be there actually for the Columbia game. Um, I thought he had a really good game. I thought he was up and down that left side. I thought in an attacking role, he had some really good moves. He was twisting and turning. Um, I would like to have seen him put a few more balls into the box because I think that was kind of thing. He did win a lot of free kicks, though, to be fair, on the left-hand side. And I thought Alexander-Arnold had a good game. Certainly the first half, he looked a lot better than he did, I think, in the second half. I think he faded a little bit for whatever reason. In the first half, his deliveries, especially from set pieces, looked good. He um, was up and down that wing. He got in behind um, Hazard, who was this weird wing back for Belgium. I don't even know that. I mean, he's not a wing back, but um, yeah, he got in behind there and exploited that and put in some good crosses. And his his set pieces were good. The second half, I felt his set pieces were not very good, and some of his deliveries were very wayward as well. So, I don't know what that was that changed for him um he was taken off later on bizarrely Welbeck came on and then Rashford went to right wing back it's just as I said this was a friendly okay this was not a competitive match um and yeah but I thought he he looked good and, and I mean if Trippier you know it has a good deputy I would say I, th- I still think Trippier's the number one for that place but I think Alexander Arnold proved that he is going to be a, a future star, I think, for England um, and Liverpool. Rashford um, had a chance he should have scored, um, really should have. But that was the one piece of play I thought where England actually looked really good. Um, that one manoeuvre, I think it was kind of flicked through. Um, Belgium kind of completely lost Rashford. You know, he was down one and one with Courtois. And Courtois is a very good goalkeeper. Let's not, you know, make any bones about that. He's a very good goalkeeper, one of the best in the world. And he, you know, pulled off a save. But that is a that is a position where someone should be scoring that goal. Um, I felt if it was Vardy or Kane on the end of that chance, it probably was a goal. Um, whether or not that was down to Rashford not being good enough, or whether it was down to nerves or you know whatever um i don't know but i felt that that was a, a real chance there that 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 sort of chance is the one you have to take at a world cup you know at this like you don't get many of them against good teams and that was a clear cut chance that should have been taken um vardy I'm, I'm not a massive fan of jamie vardy in an england shirt i think he had He's really good for Leicester because they play a certain way which plays him in. And to try and like shoehorn him into this England side, it just doesn't really work out. This game was certainly set up for him a bit more. There's a little bit more space for him to run, but it wasn't a lot really. And yeah, he I don't think he did too well. I don't think Kane has got anything to worry about <laughs> in terms of his place, uh, put it that way. So the positives I could take out of this game, you know, the negatives were we didn't play well, and I wouldn't say that, barring Danny Rose, there was any players that came in there who looked like they could force their way into the team um, for the next game. I think um, the positives we can take from this are... Well, the positives are that we came second in the group. That's a positive which people have put in. I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Okay, I think winning your group is more important than trying to path a, a way through the tournament because as we have seen so far in this tournament like some of the top teams are perhaps not playing as well as some of the other teams and um, you know it's it's a difficult one to say hey you know we d- we want to avoid Brazil because did Brazil look so much better than Switzerland? You know? I, I don't know. Colombia looked better than Japan for me. So for me, that's a tougher game. I think England have got what it will take to beat Colombia. And then we will face either Sweden or Switzerland. I mean, you you can say this half of the draw on paper is easier, okay? Because on here you've got, you know, Uruguay, Portugal, France, Argentina... Brazil, Mexico, you know, Japan, if we, if we were there instead of them. But the reality of the situation is 
these two teams are not playing very well. Brazil have not hit you know, full flow yet. Mexico looked good, but then really failed in their last game against uh, Sweden. Japan, not up to too much. Portugal, very much a one-man team. Uruguay looked tricky, but you know, none of those teams, I think, have hit anywhere near full stride. That's not to say they're not going to. But if I look at this, I go, um, you know, Switzerland looked tidy. So did Sweden. Denmark aren't up to much, but Croatia looked really good. That's a bit, you know, if we even manage to get past these, that's a potential semi. Um, and Spain are Spain, you know. Again, perhaps not a full flow, but dangerous. So, you know, people are saying, oh, the advantage here is we lost, so we're on this side of the draw. We're not on this side of the draw, you know. So potentially, if we got to, if we got to the final, like, yeah, okay. If we got to the final, um, you know, We've got a better we've got a better chance of reaching there. I, I as I said, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Colombia, I think, are a dangerous side. Um, the advantages are perhaps that Rodriguez might be injured for the game. Um, we play on Tuesday, I believe it is. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, I don't. I mean, that gives him five days to recover. The World Cup. I think he'll probably recover. So I think he'll probably play. Looked their best player, um, although he hasn't had a great season. And Colombia have not looked that good. I will say that much. But it's a knockout game now. You know, you know, free kick from Rodriguez or you know one of those long shots from him, and Pickford doesn't look that good. Shall I, dare I say it's dangerous? It, you know, every team is here because you know they've managed to win a game. There's no one here who hasn't managed to win a game. It's every team here has dangerous players, England included, of course. I don't think Colombia would want to play England. I don't think they definitely would want to play Belgium. Um, you know, and then Sweden, Switzerland. Traditionally, we do quite well against Switzerland. I seem to remember us beating them, but this looks like a much better Switzerland side than others in the past. They're pretty highly ranked as well, though. I think they're ranked higher than um, England are. Um, so... Who even knows? You know, we've got to take it one game at a time. It's a cliche, but it's so true. You know, Colombia. Um, it's going to be a, a tough game. I, if you ask me, I, I, I don't know. We'll never know if it was the right decision from Southgate to rest. You know, most of the team going into this next game. We will never know. Um, we could get knocked out by Colombia. We could get knocked out in the quarters, the semis, the final. We could win it. We we don't know if it was a good decision or not. You know, we can only trust that him as the manager is in that camp and he knows the players and he knows that, you know, for him, that was the best decision he made. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was maybe a cheeky little phone call with Martinez where they were like, hey, are you going to arrest players? Yeah, OK, I'm going to arrest players. <laughs> um, it really wouldn't surprise me too much. But, I mean, we're now in, you know, we now know all these teams are into the knockout. Knockout stages traditionally, this is where it really starts. This is where those big players come into factor, you know. And, you know, for me, put away what happened in group stages, you know, to teams like Argentina or to um, Spain even, or, you know, a lot of these teams, you, you know, put that to bed because... These are one-off matches now. There are four matches left for some of these teams in this competition to win the World Cup. And, you know, this is when big players will step up and, and show what they're made of. Can England do it? Um, well, not if we have to use our B team. Um, <laughs> I mean... Listen, we all said before the tournament the core finals would be a good achievement and nothing's changed from that I don't think personally um, it's nice to have comfortably come through the group stage it, it it was so weird to have a World Cup match where I was like it kind of doesn't matter if we win or lose this in a way momentum is great it's good to have that of course I do believe that psychologically if England had had a good performance against Belgium and won that game they would be better going into this game but on the other side, flip side, you can say, well, at least Gal Southgate now knows his team. He now knows that 
some of those players did not impress in my opinion and he knows you know we know what that team's going to be going against Colombia the only position I think which we'll have any doubt in is um, if Deli Ali is fit and whether or not he puts in Rose for Young in my opinion everybody else is nailed in the Maguire Stones um, Walker trio I think is going to be against Colombia Pickford's going to be in goal Trippier's going to be the right back we're going to have Henderson um my mind's gone blank Henderson Lingard sorry God uh Sterling Kane and either Ali or uh, I could see an argument for Delph instead of Loftus-Cheek but maybe Loftus-Cheek with his, his power um could get in there because I didn't think he had a great game I'm a massive fan of Loftus-Cheek I really like the player okay he um played brilliantly for Palace this season one of the reasons why we stayed up kind of almost missed out on a lot of the headlines because of Zaha and I think he's going to be a future England international like a mainstay one of the first names on the team sheet um, and Chelsea will be dumb as hell to get rid of him but I'm also can say he didn't have a great game um, as a lot of the players didn't to be fair but if you're going to have a bad game that was the one to do it in so now England had this opportunity, I guess, to push onwards and, you know, we'll see where we can go. Um, in the other matches that played, um, I watched uh, Colombia play against Senegal. I felt Senegal were really unlucky to go out. I felt very sorry for them. I think they've played some good football. Um, Colombia, set piece, that, that meaner guy very solid uh you know he's a tall big guy and and no dangerous other than that i really didn't feel like they offered that much i haven't felt like they've offered that much quadrado quadrado i think it is um of juventus for me of chelsea he looks dangerous you know running at players um that could be a worry for england definitely falcao is despite getting on the years capable of finishing as we've seen so we need to be very wary of colombia they've they've got this stage because they're a good team Perhaps not quite because they were four years ago, but um, that's probably could be said of a lot of teams in this competition. Um, you know, and the advantage is here that instead of perhaps Germany facing them potentially in the you know quarters, we could face Sweden or Switzerland. So you got to look at the positives there. Um, yeah, so super looking forward to it. We have no football tomorrow, would you believe? There is no football on, on Friday. You know, there's a, a day off for, for the, from the World Cup for everyone. Um, that's going to be weird. But then we're right back in it on Friday. Um, we're going to have uh, Uruguay, Portugal, France, Argentina, which whew, cannot wait. Um, I may do like a little short uh, video like each of these days if I can, you know, the 30th, the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd. Because I think these are going to be really interesting games coming up. Um, I can't wait. The, you know, in my opinion, like at this World Cup, in in previous World Cups, I think it's like I was trying to think of the last World Cup, and my when England went out in the last World Cup in the group stage, my interest in the competition was still there, but it had waned a little bit, I think. Um, and it makes a difference, obviously, having your team in the you know the knockout stages but also i'm just really fascinated to note to think to wonder on that 15th of july you know at like six o'clock who is going to be the winner of that game because i have no idea right now <laughs> no idea um yeah so we'll see um but god i i think belgium look good um i think croatia look good and some of the other teams are more than capable, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, you know, not a great result, but overall, not a disaster. We go into the game against Colombia with um, a couple of players on Knox, but I think they'll be okay. There was the talk of Stones potentially. I hope not, because I think he's looked very good for us, very very good. Um, I think he's he him as well is going to be a real. Um, I think there's a core there for England when you go through that team you see like Stones you know these young players Stones uh, Rose Trippier um, you know Henderson's still quite young Dyer's still young um, Ali Lingard 
you know they're all less than 25 i think um loftus cheek as well um henderson might actually be a little bit older to be there, about 27 or something uh kane obviously still young as well sterling's young there, there's real potential here for the euros in the next world cup and that's what we've got to focus on i think but yeah let me know what you think guys never nice to lose a match in the world cup but if we were going to lose one that would be the one to lose <laughs> till next time see you soon